remember when they used to have architectural plans that were actually on paper? They'd be rolled up and put in a tube and then you'd unroll them and they'd have this big architectural plan on them for your house or whatever you're working on. Yeah, well, they don't make those anymore apparently. So working on the portrait that I just got finished up with, with the uh, called Our New Home, and this is for the Ruff family, uh, we called for these plans to be falling out of the tube and flying through the air. And at the time, I didn't realize that this was an issue. And only when I asked for uh, the plans to be provided so I could photograph them to do this, I found out, well, they don't really actually make plans. It's all digital now. So uh, we had to come up with a creative way to actually add the digital plans onto actual pieces of paper so we could have them flying through uh, the air. Now, as far as this one over here, the big one off to the, this one, this is actually a photo of their house that I took and I added on. So this isn't part of the plans, but everything else down here actually are the digital plans that they gave me to use. So anyway, we're going to go in and we're going to add a plan to this piece of paper. This is the actual piece of paper that we use for this piece down here. All right, so we're going to go in here and add this plan to this piece of paper. All right, so I first off start by cutting the piece of paper out, which I've actually done on this for this sample. Uh, since I don't like a clear, it's harder to see, I'm going to go ahead and keep this there. Now, for this piece of paper to be in this portrait, it's a little bit too cool, all right? It's a little bit blue for me, so we're going to change that and make it a little bit more yellow. We're going to do that by adding a color balance layer on, and then I'm going to attach it to the actual piece of paper, and then we're going to ramp down the yellow here. Now, I like on this picture here, it's about 25, 26, roughly in that area. And then I'm going to bump the red up to about three. You don't need to do red too much. If you do it too much, let's say up to 15, obviously it becomes way too red. We don't like too red. So uh, negative yellow or negative 25 on the yellow, positive three on the red. That works for me. All right. Now this is going to be super easy. You're going to be shocked, but it's really cool and really effective. So we're going to take this layer here with the actual digital plans on it. We're going to bring it over and we're going to lay it on top. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach it to this layer just because I'm going to do something here in just a little bit with it. And we're going to rotate it to actually fit like we want it in our portrait. Something like that roughly. Now that's looking a little you know, it's straight up and down when we have a fold in the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and warp this. Just, I mean, there's no reason to this. It's just to give it a better feel of actually being on that paper. So there's nothing that, you know, necessarily states that this is the way it has to look. We're just kind of making stuff up now. Uh, that's a little bit too warped in the, in the middle for me. So we're going to come out here just like that. Give it just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the perspective just a little bit. Like that. Bring that down. And then that kind of makes it a little wonky as far as the size. So we're going to go ahead and bring that down just a little bit. So that isn't horrendously bad. I don't think. So let's go with that. Might even be better than the original. Okay, so now we have our plans, our plans on the piece of paper. And then we're going to come up here to a blend mode and we're going to add multiple. Now check this out. This is badass. All of a sudden, the white, boom, gone. Our plans are on the piece of paper. How freaking cool is that? Our plans are on the piece of paper. It's amazing. Anyway, uh, we can go up here and add a couple of other layers onto it. <clears throat> select our paintbrush, select a black 
100% opacity, 100% flow. I like to work with, make our hardness zero and just come in here and paint a little bit of uh, shadow on this piece of paper here, roughly like that. Go ahead and give it a blur, usually eight, nine, something in that realm works for me. And then just drop the opacity. So you can see all of a sudden that piece of paper where it had a little bit of depth, but it was still pretty flat. All of a sudden we add some shadow onto it like that. And boom, you can see the depth actually coming into that piece of paper. That is freaking cool. Now we're going to go in here and add. Now this shading and the highlights and things like that, I would normally do within the actual portrait but I'm just kind of giving you this as a little extra. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose 867B00. That's a nice poopy, pukey yellow highlight color that I like to use. And then we're at 100% opacity and flow. And then we're just going to paint that highlight right there on that. And that's all you got to do. You're finished. <laughs> Actually, you're not finished. Okay. We're going to go in here and add a color dodge blend mode onto that. And then we can drop that opacity down to whatever, you know, looks good. You want it to be subtle. You don't want it to be obvious. Like you get here, that's too obvious. Bring it down. You can be subtle about it. You can even bring this up just a little bit to give this piece more yellow. This might be a little too yellow. So we're going to grab our erase tool. I like being at about 11 to 14. And then that way, a hardness of zero again. And that way I can just kind of do a couple strokes on it. And boom, we have our highlights. You have your piece of paper. It's all there. And that's awesome. Now, one more thing that you can do to actually bring this to, I like to put an edge around that. And on this portrait here, I did that with this piece of paper and this piece of paper, but for some reason, I forgot with this piece of paper. All right, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how I did that. Pretty dang easy. So we're gonna come in here, and we're gonna apply that. And then we're gonna bring it up here, and we're going to do a stroke on that. That's not too bad. I'm going to change the color though to be more of a grayish. Just because I don't like black. Too defined on here. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and flatten that whole layer out really good here. And then we're going to come in. Not really sure. I can't remember what I did with this. Let's do this. Apply. I did this in some creative way. <laughs> uh, technically, you could do it that way. We're going to go ahead and do it that way because I don't want to spend all my time doing this. Bring our opacity back up because we got this little piece here that just is not going to cooperate with us. Come on. Come on, sucker. All right, so we're going to bring that and just erase that little spot right there. Then you can see that's a little wonky right there. We could go in here and make that a little less wonky, give it a wrap, and just bring that down like that. All right, so that's pretty good. Uh, I don't know. It's a little too defined for me. I would go ahead and probably give that a 
blur of very subtle blur. Maybe. Um, that's not too bad. Maybe there, and then drop the opacity down. Something like that. A little bit more. Something like that. And actually, it's probably a little bit too thick. I would have narrowed it or, you know, made a little bit smaller of a line around there. But you get the point. That's how you do it. Even if you didn't have that in there, it's still pretty dang cool. Pretty dang cool. So that's how you add a plan onto a blank piece of paper uh, when you don't have the ability to actually go out and get architectural plans because they don't make them anymore. They make them digital. This image here would look weird if we had digital images falling out and into the flying through the air it'd be like um, code just flying through the air that we couldn't read anyway that's how you do it hope you guys got some benefit out of this go out try it in your composites if you have the opportunity or create the opportunity to do it in your composites and link them below i'd love to see them see what you're doing and from till the next time i guess I don't really have anything else to say, but until the next time, we'll see you on the next edition of Flutillustrator TV. Boom. I'm out. Seriously, I'm out. Bye-bye.